All right, let's jump to the AFC North. Uh, let's start with your Ravens. Their win total is nine and a half. It's heavily juiced to the over at minus 160. So you're talking about more like, that's really 10, um, 10 on the dot. If, you, if you're talking win totals, I'm sure there's some tens out there, depending what book you're betting at. But I, I got to say this, man, <laughs> in terms of injury luck, uh, statistically speaking, they had the worst injury luck on record uh, in the last two decades. Uh, and, 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 and by a wide margin as well. They lost uh, over 191 games uh, to injury last year. That tops the previous high of just under 172, uh, you know, over these last two decades. So, you know, the Ravens, a healthy Ravens team is obviously a different beast than, you know, what was going on last year with that secondary. You look at Harbaugh and his career in Baltimore, 8-5-1 uh, and one to the over. Uh, so I, I think there are a lot of things to like about this team, and I know you like them as well. Um, so talk about them and why you uh, why they're your only Super Bowl future. Yeah, we talked about in our preseason, our post Super Bowl wrap up. They were thirty to one out there. I was like, this is outrageous. Just like the Bills. I mean, the the Bills last year. I think we're out of whack. I think the Ravens are too. It's buy low, sell high principles in the NFL. I think everyone just kind of got off the Ravens after last year and is off Lamar Jackson, when people forget that this team, it's the, what do you just talk about? The, the Rams won a Super Bowl because Tart dropped an interception. Uh, the, the Bills didn't because they didn't have a squib kick. Because the NFL, like, the Ravens were always in the mix. They got into the playoffs. And then it comes down to random plays here or there. It comes down to they went 0 of 8 and on fourth down against the Titans or um, the pick six against the Bills. Like, um, they're going to be in the mix. Whether you think Lamar Jackson can get them over the hump or not, I think it, 30 to one was outrageous 25 to we still find 22 to one um this is i think just out of whack from where i have them priced i have them projected closer to 11 wins you mentioned the injury luck i love the draft you love the organization you love all the little things the coaching um one of the best coaching situations in the nfl one of the best special teams units in the nfl which there will always be some hidden wins there we saw that against the lions last year um the punter by the way i i, I wanted the punt guy but jordan staff is looking yeah extremely didn't, good. didn't did you see him uh him and tucker switch spots and he kicked an extra point like mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. like so that means if i mean god forbid it, anything ever happens to tucker like in game like don't you know, be there yeah i'm just saying i said god forbid knock on wood but we had enough injury luck last year we don't need our <laughs> best player going down um so uh yeah so like the you know, the offensive line, the running backs, everyone was hurt. Last year. And then the whole secondary. So they should have one of the best secondaries in the NFL. And last year, they're throwing backups out there every week, giving up 50 to Burrow. Speaking of which, they have a new defensive coordinator, which I think they needed to do. I've talked about this before. Blitz heavy. Wink Martindale, I think, could do some good things with the Giants who need to create some pressure. But the, the elite quarterbacks in the NFL, I mean, the AFC, you, you, you can't just blitz them every play. We've seen it. Go look at Burrow's numbers against the blitz. But look at Mahomes' numbers against the Blitz. And then look at what they've done to the Ravens over the past couple of years. So I think uh, a scheme change helped. I love the addition of Marcus Williams. I love the draft across the board. I think that them, the Giants, and the Jets, had, they, they were my three highest rated drafts. Um, so big bounce back year for the Ravens. And, yeah, I think they'll be in the mix. They'll get into the playoffs. The biggest weakness on the team by far, everyone knows it. And, by the way, Isaiah likely looks like yeah. that. I was about to a say, how do we monster? How do we get this far talking about the Ravens without mentioning Isaiah Likely? Like this dude, he's probably what I think is going to happen is he's going to be like they're going to use him kind of like receiver. Miami used Gasicki. Yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I got him projected for uh, tight end snaps, but also wide receiver snaps. Yeah, we. I did a. Uh, I just did a, a fantasy draft with my wife's work, and then I did another one with old friends, and I've I've likely in every draft, and now I got to do one with you, Fox. Um, <laughs> all like the fantasy experts. Uh, and I'm like, God damn it. There's no way I'm ever, I'm going to end up getting likely. Um, but now everyone's starting to know about him, but uh, yeah, that, so he really helps. And obviously you have Mark Andrews, but still it's like, you know, you, you traded away Hollywood Brown. Um, and I like the trade from the Ravens perspective. You look at what they initially used to get them and then what they got back in return, the Ravens fleece the Cardinals. But, you know, now you're asking Rashad Bateman to be, um, you're number one, um, Devin Duvernay. Uh, like th that's, I don't think you can win the Super Bowl 
with that. So what did to go back to the Ravens 2012? What did they do in leading up to that year? And they, by the way, they fired their offensive coordinator during that year. Um, I think in like December they fired Cam Cameron, but they brought in an Anquan Bolden. That's who they need. They need a, they need a, they need an Anquan Bolden um, or like a veteran receiver and they need to sign him at some point during the year. And I think that that's kind of the missing piece, you know, unless one of these young receivers really steps up. Um, Cause I like Bateman. I like Bateman as a two, like if Bateman's your two with this rushing attack, you got likely and Andrews. And then you add like a proven vet on the outside. That's the missing piece. I'm sure the Ravens know that they're a smart organization. So we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll get the Gesicki and then just put out Gesicki oh. <laughs> likely and Andrews. Um, so, yeah, I, I think this is one of the better teams in the AFC. I, um, yeah, I, I, there's so much to like about them. And then they're a major regression candidate. And yeah, I also like the nuances of their schedule. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be a big year, big bounce back year for the Ravens. I think anything over 20 to 1 is a play to win the Super Bowl. I, I actually like Bateman. I think he can. I think he's going to surprise some people as a one because um, I, I was looking at Matt Harmon's uh, reception perception breakdown of Bateman. And, you know, he essentially looks at, takes an eight game sample and looks at how well they get open, you know, so not just uh, when he's, when they're targeted, but just how they're lining up, how much they're beating each type of coverage. And Bateman was uh, 74th percentile against man, 81st percentile against press and 85th against zone. And they were lining him up uh, as, as the X. Like, so he was on the line of scrimmage, like was able to beat press coverage. Uh, so I think, and they really haven't had that. Like Marquise Brown wasn't that. So like you said, I think it was actually a smart trade for the Ravens. I think, you know, Bateman being able to, cause he remember he had no off season last year either. So I, I think, you know, him being able to kind of have a full off season, I think he'll surprise some people. So uh, I, but even I, if he's a one, that if he is the one and I, he, I think it, it could be. You still want to. You still need to improve your. Yeah. You oh yeah. 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 Too. Like I think Duvernay is kind of like he's a guy that he reminds me of like he's like Rondale Moore. He's like Wandale Robinson. Like he doesn't. They don't need to. He's Isaiah McKenzie. Like you don't need to use Duvernay as a starting outside two. You know, like yeah. that. That's the issue because I think you know if you have Proche is like your four or even if he's your slot. Like I, I like Proche. He's been missing some time in camp, so that that's not ideal either. Um, Robinson, I don't like, I, I think Robinson, like when, when you just look at, you know, a large sample of guy, of a guy who runs a ton of routes and does not get targeted, that, that means he's just not getting open. So I, I don't think Robinson helps as much. The Ravens have a bad history with guys like that. I mean, remember like, uh, Miles Boykin, Des Bryant, like they, I, I just, I don't think they're going to be able to get much out of Robinson. So I, I agree. I think they need another guy to come in, but, but I do think Bateman will surprise people. I, I'm actually more worried about. Uh, Greg Roman than I am the receiving court at this point because what I started to see last year out of them I don't know if you noticed this too was uh, you know for the first time in I think a while like it really became easy to game plan for the Ravens offense and like teams just started to like play man coverage uh, blitz. blitz you know set like the if you ever played Madden like it's essentially like the engage eight like they just send everybody who's not covering a receiver at yeah, it's sort of that, that Dolphins Thursday yeah. night game. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I, I just feel like Ro- I didn't see any answers from Roman. Uh, and that's why I think the offensive numbers actually at times looked better with with uh, Huntley and, and Johnson just because, it, it, you know, defenses didn't have like this. You're running something in. different. Yeah. yeah, they didn't have like this tried and true way of just game planning for the Ravens anymore. And, and Mark Andrews numbers really kind of took off too when, when Lamar went down. So uh, we'll see, you know, he's had a whole offseason season. Um, you know, the O line should be in better shape. We'll see what's going on with Stanley, but um, yeah, I, I think that's really what I'm watching for, even more so than than the receiving depth. Because we, you know, the Ravens, we you know, Lamar put up an MVP season with who was it, Willie Sneed? Uh, I, I don't even remember all these guys. Was it was Chris Moore? I mean, it was there was not yeah. a lot of, of, of guys there, and he and he still balled out. So if, if as long as it's not a, a offense that's easy to game plan for, and JK dot by, by the way, that. That also could be an issue once again. I mean, Do- there's no guarantee with Dobbins. Edwards is on the pup. So there are some things to worry about if, like, Roman doesn't have his full complement of backs and, and he hasn't quite figured it out. But uh, if they can put it all together, I agree. I think this is one of the highest upside teams in the league. 
Uh, I, I do think, you know, they were obviously a lot better value earlier in the offseason. Now they're about 20 to one, which is a little more in line with, I think, their true odds. Um, but I, I do like this Ravens team. Uh, I'm just watching for, for how Roman looks um, and how he's scheming up this offense. Um, yeah, it looks like Stanley's coming off pup list this week. From what yeah. I've heard from people, for what it's worth. Uh, let's talk the Cincinnati Bengals coming off the Super Bowl. You know, the Super Bowl loss. Do we get a Super Bowl hangover? Their win totals at 10, even money to the over, minus 120 to the under. Uh, pretty lucky in terms of injuries last year, seventh fewest games missed, uh, adjusted. Uh, I do like their improve the improvements they made to the offensive line. I think the interior of the line will be uh, better than it was last year. So that, that should really help this offense you know, in year two of Jamar Chase, year three of Joe Burrow, take it to the next level. Because now you look up and down the line. I mean, um, you know, Lyle Collins uh, at right tackle, you know, to, with Jonah Williams, who, who played well uh, at left tackle last year. And then, you know, you add Karras in the middle. He's a, a plus uh, interior lineman. Alex Kappa is a plus interior lineman. Uh, we'll see what happens at the other guard spot. But they should have, you know, four good offensive linemen at least, which is, uh, a major step up, uh, you know, don't underestimate, you know, Jamar Chase second year leap as good as he was last year. The receiving core is good. The offense should be fine. Uh, I wish they would let Chris Evans take over for P Ryan in, in that uh, third down role. And then on defense, I mean, the, the defensive line is decent. Like Logan Wilson at linebacker, the safety should be good with Bates and Bell. Uh, you know, Eli Apple probably still is going to be a, a, a liability, but you know, you have Hilton at the slot. Wuzier played well last year. So this is, you know, as much as I want to just say, okay, fade the Bengals, like it's still a, on paper, at least a pretty rock solid uh, team. What do you think? Yeah. I've, ever, I've seen a lot of people want to fade the Bengals, but I don't see that. Um, I don't see any value either way, but I thought I was going to be fading, but I'm not. And their, their main weakness on their offense, what well, was twofold last year was the early in the season was the play calling and like just inefficient. Let's run on first down. And they Taylor finally opened that up later in the year, um, which I think was important. But it's Joe Burrow is he's the truth is Joe Burrow. And you have those receivers mix in, and then you improve the primary weakness all year, which was the offensive line. And they definitely were fortunate last year in a number of different categories. And I, I think the defense is as a whole overrated and they definitely overperformed. I pray for Eli Apple against the, the uh, Chiefs this year had that circled. He was tweeting up a storm um, after that win over the Chiefs. Um, I'm sure the Chiefs probably spent a couple of days, the staff this year, picking on plays to burn him um, with celebrations. But um, yeah, they improved their offensive line. I think the defense will take a step back, but they really benefited from the division last year where the Ravens, we just talked about it, the most injured team in NFL history. They were a shell of themselves. They also were just trying to blitz Burrow with backup corners. And, and well, they, in fairness, Burrow torched them when their secondary was healthy, but the, just a, a dumb scheme to try against Burrow. And the Browns also had really bad luck. And, you know, they were dealing with injuries all season as well. So it was like the perfect storm in what was supposed to be a tough division. And then, you know, Roethlisberger turned in into a pumpkin. Um, so it was kind of the perfect storm for them to get in the playoffs. And as I said, that's all you need to do in the NFL get into the playoffs. Um, if you have a good quarterback, you obviously need a good quarterback, which the Bengals did. And then they got fortunate in the playoffs. It's what you need um, until the Super Bowl. They, if uh, Derek Carr doesn't hit a helmet, they probably lose that home to the Raiders. And so they just, they just got in. So I think it's going to be tougher for them to get into the playoffs this year because Ravens are going to be better and presumably won't have as much injury luck. Now, the Browns did lose Watson, um, but the AFC is just loaded uh, across the board. And so, yeah, I think that they might take a step back and it might be a struggle to get into the playoffs, but I'm not in a rush to fade them. It's still Burrow. It's still an offensive-driven lead. And you have Joe Burrow, those receivers mixing, a coach who showed that he's now more willing to, you know, let Burrow open it up on early downs. Um, so, yeah, I do have questions about the defense. And... They do have a very tough schedule. I have them with the fifth toughest schedule. And by the way, the Ravens have with the 20th toughest schedule because they finished in last place. That was big for them. And some of the games they got as a result were massive 
by losing that game to Pitt. Um, so yeah, Bengals not in a rush to fade them like some not buying them. Um, I think they're priced pretty properly in the market and yeah. That's, yeah, they, uh, they finish up the season, by the way, at Tampa. Well, they, they, they finish up. Here's how they finish up the season. After their bye at Pitt, which is always going to be tough in division, at Tennessee, home against the Chiefs in that revenge game. Home. This just illustrates the AFC. Then home against the Browns, who will have Watson back. We'll talk about the Browns in a sec. Then at Tampa, then at New England, then home against the Bills, then home against the Ravens. Yeah, AFC. They're... Ain't no joke. It's they have a early like in the first nine weeks. Well, really starting in week three, they have a few um, games where I think they have to. If you're betting the over, they're going to need at the Jets in week three. Then you know home against Atlanta in week seven at Cleveland with Brissett in week eight, and you have home against the Panthers week nine. You get those four wins. I mean, you still need seven more, but I mean, you got to play you know Pittsburgh twice, the Ravens twice. Uh, you're going, like you said, you're going to Tampa. You got to play going to New England. You got the Chiefs. You got you going to uh, Tennessee. It got there's the Bills. yeah, there's just there's not. I, I wouldn't feel confident in them, even with you know going four and zero against the, those teams I just mentioned. I wouldn't feel too confident going. What is it, seven and four? They would need to go. No, yeah, no, seven and six. I guess. I guess that's. It's doable. It's doable, but it's not, it's like they could easily go five and eight in those games. Um, yep. It's, you know, they're, they're a quality team, but like you said, this AFC is loaded. So yeah, I don't, I don't see any value there, but I'm not, I'm not one of those people that's just saying, Oh, Super Bowl hangover, got to fade them at all costs. Um, I, I think, you know, you're just going to have to find opportunities week to week to, to back this team, depending on, you know, how the market's going. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, you know, they're most of their lines are, uh, still off the board, but their win total is up at eight and a half plus one ten to the over. Um, you know they should have a good offensive line still. I know they lost their center, which is not ideal, but um, it, it's it, this the one thing that I think does Cleveland some favors is that you know, and these schedule makers. I mean, I, you know it's 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 interesting because their schedule to start the year at Carolina versus the Jets versus the Steelers at Atlanta. Um, you know, those are four games. I think they could come out with three wins, maybe four, if they if they if things go right. And that's even with Brissett. And then and then it starts to get tougher. You know, then you got the Chargers, the Patriots, the Ravens, the Bengals, the, the Dolphins, the Bills, the Bucks. But then you get that game against Houston uh, with Watson back. But the, the schedule even with Watson, you know, after that Houston game at Cincy, home against Baltimore, home against the Saints, at Washington, at Pittsburgh, uh, you know, eight and a half probably considering the easy schedule early but the tough schedule late uh, it's probably fair I I don't really see any value either way um, but what do you think of this, this Browns team yeah it's, there's a lot of uncertainty here and um, you know it's I mean Watson looked awful by the way I mean and plus it, he, it's like he had so much time off and then you're gonna count on him to come back in after 12 games It'll be 700 days on the dot in between games, live regular season NFL action and just on a new team and then just be fine while everyone else is in week 12. Like it's, it's going to take them a couple of weeks, you would assume to, and then all the, then it's the end of the season. So it's, it's hard to project, like, what are you going to get from Watson when he comes back? Right. Cause you, there has to be some kind of adjustment period. Um, and they're from what I've seen, they're running a whole new offense with based on RPOs and motion and like with doing that with Brissett is like, I, I don't know. Um, the defense is going to be really good though. And the offensive line is still good and the rushing attack still should be good. And yeah, I mean, Brissett is just still who he is and he's statuesque which I, I just don't think it's going to work. And from what I've seen, what they're trying to do with this offense, but they'll be in like low scoring games. So, so like they're going to be in a lot of like coin flip games. I think their defense is going to be really good um, if they can stay healthy and you know, they're going to run the ball. I think try to shorten games with Brissett. 
it's a really smart analytically driven set. So they're going to be in some games that when they're underdogs and um, they're going to be in some close games against teams that they should be. So I think that there's a high variance, really high variance with this team, especially considering we don't know what we're going to get with Watson when he comes back, but I would tend to think it's worse than people are, are assuming. So I projected them, let's see, before Watson, like if you assume Watson for the full games and then he was back to what he was, I, I projected them over 10, 10 wins and I think 10.2, yeah, 10.2. If you if I, if I they don't have him for the whole year, I'm at like seven, eight, seven, nine. I assume him, he comes back, but he's not going to be that effective, but it's going to be a, a bit of an improvement. So I'm at like eight, three. So I don't know. It's very hard to project. Um, and uh, yeah, they're in the loaded AFC. I think that they're a positive regression candidate. They're well coached. I like their defense, like their rushing attack, like their offensive line. So the things to like here, um, we'll see how the wide receivers work out, but um, it's tough sledding the AFC, man. But I, I think they'll probably end up finishing right around their win total. Um, and it'll come down to what Watson can give them late. And I would tend to think that it's not going to be much. It's, be, it's just such a huge learning curve and so much rust that if I had to guess, they end up going under. Yeah, I think this it's it kind of reminds me a little of the Saints. It's like they're good good defense with a lot of quality players and then like a good, great running back. It's just it just there's just some uncertainty there where you could see them winning anywhere from like five to 12 games. So if you do like Cleveland, I wouldn't attack the win total. I know it is at plus money, but I, I would go, you know, division, you know, they're they're sizable underdogs to win the division. Um, you know, what is it? Let's see. They are plus 380 to win the division. You know, I believe they're plus money to make the playoffs as well. So, you know, they're, it, they're, you could see this team, you know, it's the fans key, the run game defense. If they, if they could survive that stretch with Brissett and Watson's, you know, Watson, uh, this, this could be a double digit win team. So I, I, I just don't want, you know, I think, like you said, the win total is right, but they do have some upside. It's just that they have some downside as well. So uh, that's how it kind of yeah. I gotta them. check. I gotta check the Super Bowl market, but they, I know that the price came down. But maybe the way to attack their upside is a Super Bowl future. I gotta see where it, where it is settled. What is it sitting at right now? It's probably uh, let's see. It is at DraftKings. It is plus uh forty to one. Forty to one. So solid. yeah. So it's back to forty. You can find forty to one. So the thinking there is they sneak into the playoffs, right? Like Brissett kind of just they tread water with Brissett win some of these close games with their defense and rushing attack. And then later in the season, Watson, it takes him a few games to get acclimated and get up, catch up back up to speed. And then they sneak into the playoffs, right. Is the last spot, but then Watson has gotten a number of games under his belt. And then you have all of a sudden you're like the scariest seven seed where you have Watson back now in full game mode, basically after like a preseason a full preseason. Um, and then you have your defense, your rushing attack, all those things are going to work really well in the playoffs with, if he's back to an elite quarterback, and then all of a sudden you're 41, you're like, Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that you got to go upside with, with Cleveland just based on uh, the circumstances. Let's finish up with Pittsburgh. Uh, the win total is up to seven and a half at even money. Um, you know, this, I, I kind of like this team, um, a little, you know, earlier in the off season when the, the win total, I think was at seven at, at one point, uh, might even been some six and a half out there. Now it's up to seven and a half. I don't like it as much, but I still, I think Pittsburgh is still interesting because, you know, we know Tomlin's never had a losing season on one hand. On the other hand, they're a regression candidate. They, you know, outperformed their, uh, Pythagorean wins by two last year. They won nine Pythagorean said seven. Uh, Tom window, love him. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be an underdog in, I, I count 10 or 11 games probably this year. Um, you know, we know Tom is an underdog. Uh, he's 10 and five to the over. So hitting two thirds of the time in terms of the win total overs. Uh, so like, this is a team I think, and then, and then you have like kind of this unrealized upside with Kenny Pickett because he's like really good in the pre, I know it's just preseason relax, but he's like really good. And Mitch, uh, Mitch Falsbisky, Mitch Bortles, whatever you want to call him, he's actually 
won with teams like this in the past. He's only had one losing season as a starting quarterback. Uh, you know, he had those good Bears defenses behind him. So, like, I'm kind of intrigued by Pittsburgh, uh, but I liked it a lot better, uh, at, you know, w- where you could push at seven, uh, even though Tomlin's never had that losing season. Seven and a half, I still have him uh, as underdogs in, like I said, 10 to 11 games. Now, they do great in those spots, but, you know, it's still, you know, betting it over to, to, for a team to win eight games when you have them underdogs in 11 is uh it's not exactly ideal either yeah i like this under and i know you're going we're going against a lot of history here but i played under seven and a half i know tomlin has never had a losing season but he's been eight and eight a bunch um and now we have 18 game seasons he's only he's always had ben roethlisberger outside of one season and last year you could say well ben roethlisberger was awful and the quarterback play this year might be awful but it can't be much worse than last year but last year they were basically a uh a, I don't know, a five win team that won nine games. I mean, if not only did they get extremely lucky in a number of games, they went eight, two and one, by the way, eight, two and one in one possession games. And it wasn't just that. So, I mean, they, this team probably should have won five or six games. Let's take a look at their, their wins last year. Oh, oh, by the way, all of their wins, they won nine games. Nine, they went nine, seven and one, all of their wins came by one possession, except for one. You know what that one was? That was against the Browns. And to close out the regular season, or to, it was like, I think it was the second to last game, when they were playing for their playoff hopes, in Big Ben's last home playoff game, when the Browns were eliminated, it was a Monday night, the Browns were eliminated the night before, and they didn't play a bunch of their starters. Still, in order to win by two possessions that game, Najee Harris had to break a run with like eight seconds to go of like a 50-yard run. So really, all nine of their wins came by one possession. Let's go over them. They in the four, they beat the Bills in week one. They were dominated in that game um, because of like a blocked punt in the opener. They won at home by three in overtime against the Seahawks at home, thanks to T.J. Watt for fumble, who didn't have Russell Wilson. They beat the Browns 15 to 10. Cleveland turned the ball over inside the Pittsburgh 30 on its final two drives. One via fumble, the other on downs. Denver turned turned it over on downs inside the five with Teddy Bridgewater in the final seconds. I remember that one. I had to guy the under um, in that, and that saved me. So I like that. Yeah. They beat <laughs> they beat the Bears, the lowly Bears, 29-27. Chicago tried like a 70-yard field goal or something for some reason to win it. The Bears outgained the Steelers 414 to 280. They averaged 7.1 yards per play to the Steelers 4.2. They tied the Lions in overtime because Detroit's backup kicker missed the game-winning field goal. They beat the Ravens by one because the Ravens didn't get a game-winning two-point conversion with 12 seconds left. The beat-up Ravens in Pittsburgh. They beat the Titans 19 to 13 in a game they were destroyed in. Three yardage was 318 to 168. The tight, they had four turnovers. Titans had four turnovers to Steelers zero. And by the way, Tennessee turns it over on downs inside the red zone in the final minute. Catching a trend here. And then they close out the regular season with another three-point win in overtime against the Ravens, who had Tyler Huntley and a bunch of backups all over the roster. They outgained the Steelers 381 to 314. I mean, every single possible thing went right for this team. Played a number of backups. Every single team turned it over on downs inside the last minute. Eight, two, and one, really nine, two, and one in one possession games. If you count that Browns game. Also, you play a dead Browns team at the perfect time and big beds farewell. Um, so yeah, major regression coming. Division is loaded. And look, the defense are gonna get a ton of sacks. Like clockwork, they'll re- they'll lead the league in sacks. Um, but I think their defense, I mean, statistically middle of the pack last year. Not a fan of their cornerback situation. I think their defense is a bit o- overrated. Run defense is not good. And I, I don't, Mitch, I don't trust Kenny Pickett to win nine, eight, nine games in the AFC this year. Um, and I certainly, you know, my thoughts on Mitch Bortles. And the Steelers also have the worst offensive line, more top one of the yeah. worst three offensive Them lines. Them and the Bears, yeah, they're up there with the Bears in the NFL. Um, which is uh, now maybe the mobility factor for Trubisky will help, but uh, I'm selling um, the Steelers. I think they finally go under and Tomlin finally doesn't get to eight wins. I don't know. I, I kind of disagree. Like I, 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 I mean, I would, like I said, I would much like this win total to get back down to seven. 
Uh, but I actually like the upside of this team. I think I think we can buy low here because I don't think it could be understated. I don't think it could be understated how bad Ben Roethlisberger was. Like the last three years, he essentially averaged about six yards uh, per pass attempt. Like that is bottom of the barrel, just hideous, especially in a modern NFL. You know. Yeah, and that's why last year they should have won like five games. Yeah, no, I agree, but I do think. With you think Trubisky's worth three? Well, no, well, first of all, I think Pickett takes over sooner than later, and I, I think my point is, I think there's a lot of unrealized upside with the fact that number one, Pickett has looked really good. Like he could just be, he, he could be even Trubisky could be an upgrade on Roethlisberger passing and running, which is sad. But uh, Pickett could be a major upgrade. Uh, on, which which uh, rookie quarterback have you seen succeed in the NFL behind uh, a horrendous offensive line? Give me one example. I mean, he can move though. That's the thing. It's it's not like we have a big sample size because guys Lawrence aren't running. Can move. Dua can move. <laughs> fair, fair. But he was with Urban Meyer. Like I'm saying, you have Mike Tomlin. Like you have a proven what about winner. Tua? Tua could move behind. A, I'm not, not really. Not really when he came out. Like he was because he was dealing with the hip and, and all that. But I'm I'm just saying I think there's a lot of upside here because you combine all these things. You have Tomlin. You have uh good. Just play pick it, pick it offensive <laughs> rookie of the year. No, I will. I I, I mean it's funny because. There was a point where I thought he was overvalued too. Um, you know, he was like leading the field and he was a third string, but now I think he may he may actually get this job by week one. But I, I just think with the mobility for the quarterbacks, it, it can't get any worse. You still have talent at the skill positions. Uh the line should be bad, should be a little bit better, uh, you know, with with uh with Daniels. Uh I think the defense underachieved last year given like they like a lot of guys just didn't have good years. I think I think they bounced back, like you said. They can yeah, they get also faced they also, that, yeah. by the way, they have faced the, the hardest schedule in the NFL for my numbers. Um, yeah. And they actually number two, uh, the, we'll talk about the next one. Chiefs have number one. Um, yeah. They also faced a ton of backup quarterbacks last year. Yeah. Um, but last which, year. And, is... now, and, and, and they're going to now face the hardest schedule in the NFL in a division um, that, and a conference is just not easy. It's just go yeah, find I mean, the wins. I agree. I just, I, I mean, Pittsburgh, see, here's the thing with Pittsburgh. We know. We, we know this. We know Mike what Mike Tom was going to do in these games when they're underdogs. What we don't know, we haven't seen the upside. That's that that's there with Pickett. We're we're kind of judging them based off just just hideousness that was Roethlisberger with with, the, with that offense. And I just think like now it's like even if it is Trubisky, which I don't think it will be long term. Like he's an upgrade passing. You have you have good receivers. You have good Stop. running back. You have good. You have, still have good players in the secondary. You still have T.J. Watt. Like you get pressure. You can win. They can win any division game, even on the road. Like they could beat Cincinnati on the road. They could beat Baltimore on the road. Like I just think people are going to be surprised. Like it's just not a smash. Under like I, I feel like it's a trap. Like I feel like it's like we're always expected Pittsburgh to finally take that step back. Uh, I just think if they didn't do it these last I think it's the years, opposite. Everyone's going to be like, Tomlin never lost double-digit games. Um, I mean, never lost more than ne- – he's never won fewer than eight games I'm going yeah. over. Um, I think you're giving way too much credit to Trubisky, um, <laughs> who could end up – yeah, he could have like 17 picks, you got to remember too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, by the way, they, another nuance here with the second-hardest schedule is – they play, you know, they go to the Browns in week three on a short week after playing the Patriots. Their home game against the Browns is the final game of the year when Watson will have four games under his belt. That's when you get the Browns at home. That's unfortunate. I, mean, I, for get, them. It. Um, I get it. So, I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm just yeah. saying, like, it's, I just think I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I'm not saying go out and bet the mortgage. I'm just saying, I wouldn't be surprised if the Steelers surprised a lot of people. I mean, it's like, it's just like, they kind of defy all it's like even Trubisky. It's like, he had that horrible rookie year with John Fox. You remember that they barely threw the ball. Uh, And then, you know, he was on a bears team with some decent defenses, kind of like this Pittsburgh team. You know, even if you don't think they're elite, they're decent. Uh, 25 and 13 is a starter in those games. Like I just, is this Steelers team significantly worse than those bears teams? Like I, in my opinion, no. No, but they're in. But look at the, the look at the conference <laughs> yeah. and the schedule. That's the difference. I'm just saying. I, I think. And I don't think. I don't people. think the Steelers' defense is as good as that, those that Bears' defense. I mean, fair. We'll we'll see. We'll see. But uh, yeah. I, uh, but I, that, the one thing I will say for Steelers fans, um, yeah, and I agree that Tomlin has overperformed a lot. But some of the the because the defense was like just average last year. If some of the off season signings, here's where the upside is: the defense becomes into that top five unit, you know, it's like miles Jack, um, 
KZ and who they signed a corner for uh, uh Wallace, the Wallace, show. Wallace, Wallace. Yeah, Wallace. If they all hit, and then you add Flores, who I think can bring some Brian Flores, we talked about um some nuance to this defense and add some wrinkles. Um we both think think highly of Flores. Um, maybe the defense does make a jump back into a top five unit, which I'm not assuming they are, so that's why my numbers are a little more depressed. And then I also hate rookie quarterbacks behind offensive young awful offensive lines and i hate mitch portal so that's obviously why we disagree here but um yeah if if they're a top five defense and the quarterbacks just don't throw vomit then it could go over this for sure i mean either way if you even if you agree like you don't need to bet the steelers win total because we're gonna get like i said 10 11 games probably where they're underdog and you could just you know attack the underdog goat mike tomlin so uh, yeah, I, I think Steelers are surprised. You don't. Let's see how it plays out. 